Namaste guys, in this video we are going to learn a machine learning project that I have done on breast cancer detection, okay? So before I start this, some people will ask, so where I get this data, data sets, okay? So I have go to kaggle.com and download from there, okay? You can also download if you want. Now, first let's see what are the modules that I have import. First I have import numpy, matplotlib seabone and pandas okay so numpy for mathematical matplotlib for graph plotting seabone for inbuilt you know graph plotting for machine learning pandas for handling csv files after that what i have done is i have uploaded my file so if i run this and upload and i can select my data as per my requirement in my case uh, my data name is data okay data.csv open and after that i will run this command so as you here you can see that my data is load uh, i am not using p pd.read because i find this is much helpful because writing the name of the data is quite uh, time consuming and i will use simply this thing again and again just copy paste so it's better for me so after importing our data and showing it you can see various kind of parameters okay so first question arise your mind after watching the data so what you need to do from it okay you got you, are, you have the data but what you need to find so we go to the kaggle library and we will see what are the different parameters and their meaning you can see the parameter called id number and diagnosis this is the important parameter so first parameter is m is uh, malignant and benign okay so here you can see m represent malignant because we are from not from a medical background just to know this one is a bad thing and we need to avoid and this one is a good thing okay for a patient point of view so if anybody got m it means it is a dangerous thing okay it's uh, life is in danger now th these are the other parameters readings uh, taken from the breast okay and there are a lot of data as you can see uh, and if you want to learn what is the meaning of other parameters you can check it out here and you can read it deeply now after loading our data what we can do is we can simply show df.head and our data is loaded and after that we have to add df.describe to get a count mean standard deviation and if you notice something in our data that if i go there you can see here is a library called uh, a column called unnamed 32 and it is nan so if a data contains nan it is not useful for us and if you look from the data in ms excel you will see it is all nan so it is totally useless i am going to drop it later onwards okay so first thing i have done is df.describe and i get mean standard deviation okay these kind of parameters just to know standard deviations high value means the data is highly dispersed low value means data is uh, dispersion is low okay uh, it depends whether standard deviation value should be high or low uh, which one is helpful for you for example if you want to know where the gold on a plot is low standard deviation value is very helpful for you but if you want to know something about where to hide your treasure box and you got a high standard value it means it is good for you because high standard value means the data is very dispersed uh, different from the mean value if the standard deviation value is uh, minimum it means uh, the all data is clustered near to the mean value okay after that we will see what is this shapes df dot shape it is 569 by 33 it means that it contains 569 rows and 33 columns and after that i have typed df.info to see if there is any null object or useless thing as you can see it is a non-null and we can also see the data type for example the id is in 64 diagnosis is object just to know in machine learning object is not usable we will convert it to something else later onwards because when I will do machine learning, it can't understand what it means by M or B. Okay, it doesn't understand what is mean by malignant and banning. So we need to convert it to 0 and 1. 
I will do it later onwards. And all other data are in numbers, that is float 64. And here you can see in unnamed, that is 0, no, null. So it is quite useless thing. Okay. Again, I have done is df is null dot sum. What does it mean? That uh, whatever the null values, sum of all of them. Okay. So it will go through all of it and you will find that unnamed 32 contains 569 null values. So first thing we have done is df df dot draw drop column unnamed 32 because unnamed contains null values that is useless for us. So I have removed them. After that I have defined correlation and a heat heat map. So correlation basically basically means what is the relation of it. For example, in England you can see that uh, price demand uh, oil price demand is quite high. The reason is that uh there are less workers there so lesser the worker higher the price this is called correlation okay now the relation that we are seeing is uh, is basically negative correlation it means that when a value get low other value get high similarly there is a positive correlation when a value get high other value also get high okay so we have done a heat plot so that we can visualize the black part okay it means that it is highly uncorrelated or it means it is uh, when one parameter increase the other one decrease okay this is what it means the black line and this line means that when one parameter increase other will also increase in this graph what we can visualize that how does one data is related to other okay here one thing you notice that V doesn't have diagnosis M or B. Okay, the reason is that we are doing a classification problem. We want to know that what kind of parameter related uh, can do the malignant and benign. Okay, so first thing we have to do is, as I told you earlier, that our data contains two uh, classification data, malignant and benign. Okay, so malignant and benign so we need to do the diagnosis part and our machine learning doesn't understand what it means by m and b so we need to convert it so here if i type df diagnosis dot unique you can see i getting a value of m and b and their object type i need to convert into first uh, float or uh, i need to first convert into in type for my case okay either you will have a malignant or you will not okay there is no in between now what i have done is i have type pd dot get dummies data dot df drop first true so what does it means that uh, when i will type this command it will convert malignant and benign in two columns okay now drop first true means that i will drop one uh, uh, one b1 okay and if you see my data here, you can see only diagnosis M is showing on. Okay, one, one, one. And if in any case you will see zero, it means it is by uh, it means it is uh, banning. Okay, just in case if you don't understand, don't worry about it. There is a total. Uh, I provide a blog link in description. If you have any doubts and questions, just check out the blog link description for better understanding. After that, I have typed from pandas profiling report. Okay, so this is the best thing you can do because you will get all the data here in a single page. Okay, else plotting different kind of graphs is just a waste of time. You can get all the data, for example, which one is high correlation. Okay, you can see properly and you can get the uh, data. You can also click on toggle data. You can see histogram, common values extreme values everything on a single command and this will also save a lot of time uh, for my case because if you want to show your client you know various kinds of graphs then this is the best thing uh, i highly recommend you will you can do just to know that you can also plot a uh, heat map in there as well as you can see we got the heat map spearmaps pearson and others so this is a very useful uh, command if you ask me and highly recommend that you learn about this command.
now after that i will plot a sns dot pair plot so basically it is just a correlation thing but with graph plotting okay so that you can visualize it uh, just to know that pair plot takes a lot of time to plot that is the reason i am not going to run this command after that it's time to train our data so before we train our data i need to create a variable called x and y so x contains df dot i l o c all rows so here you can see it means all rows and column first to negative one what it means that it will contain all rows and column from id to negative one it means sorry not this one yeah this one so what does it mean that it will contain all rows and column up to this point remember i have typed negative one so that this last one doesn't consider because this is the uh, classification one and i want to train my model up to this okay so okay and in y i will type the negative one only because i only need this parameter diagnosis m after that uh, what we have done is i have to divide a training data set and testing data set so i am using sklearn model selection import train test split so it will split our data okay so train test split x comma y test set point two and random set zero so test size point two means that 20 percent of, of our data is our testing data okay and rest of the 80 percent data will go as a training data it is very useful remember if you defined uh, test size values very low for example 0.1 or 0 it means all your data will go to training data and your program will just cram it it will use less if you if your test size data is very low so make sure it is in between 20 to 30 percent okay now let's do our machine learning so i have first called random force classifier so what i have done is from sql and assemble i have called random force classifier and fit my model into x train and y train after that i have to check uh, what is my precision recall accuracy of the model so here you can see i have checked my all my these things parameters okay this is simple code nothing you know too high or, or rocket science or something else so here i have used mean square error accuracy score and you can see all that all those things just in case if you want to define your own parameter you can also do that here the accuracy score is uh, 96.491 for random force classifier let's see k neighbors k neighbors similarly same just you need to define k neighbors and neighbor sevens and after that we got a accuracy score of 94.73 similarly we are we are using svc okay and we got our accuracy score and this is the confusion matrix uh, to, to write confusion matrix you can simply use confusion matrix anywhere okay for example if you write confusion matrix after this one you will get the confusion matrix and confusion matrix is same for whatever you use so that's for all if you have any kind of doubts and queries make sure that you ask in comments and make sure that you re read our blog for better understanding how does this work okay I hope you learned something from this. If you have any kind of doubts and queries, make sure that you ask in comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day.